Do it again, because it's a really good joke. All right. I'm going to do the whole thing. Hello and welcome to the only podcast where we'd accept the job of being a broom boy and be excited about the potential. I'm Matt. I'm Luke. I'm, and I'm Max. And this is Force for Thought. That's funny. Isn't that funny? <laughs> That's yeah, really funny. That Thank you. That's good. All right. Uh, welcome. The NFL draft is two months behind us. We figured we'd be uh, relevant and decided to do our own <laughs> Star Wars draft. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I, w- I literally was like, what is coming up with a draft? And I was like, the only thing I really follow sports-wise is the NFL. I almost said SNL. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, well, the NFL draft happened two months ago, and I assume when we release this episode, it'll be three months ago. <laughs> and so it'll be extra relevant. Well, and closer the, to the season starting, I guess. And the military draft was only about 60 years ago, <laughs> so really. <laughs> We're just All right, let me restart with the military draft in mind. these coattails. <laughs> All right, so I came up with a list of uh, positions, people, and prompts today that Max and Luke do not know about. Even though it might be hard to believe, I also have not strategized whatsoever uh, within this uh, category, even though I uh, came up with all the people. Um, I feel like I threw some curveballs in there. I'm really excited to see what you guys... What do you guys think? I think it's going to be kind of tough. And I also have some stipulations and rules. With that being said, if we do other drafts like this, I know we were talking about it. Uh, these are only rules specifically for this episode, uh, which is the episode that uh, I'll be doing. But uh, going forward, this is very loose. Anybody else who like hosts one of these can change the rules uh, as, as well. I'm sure I will, too, once we realize that things definitely don't work or, or do. I'm trying to think. Class half full. Do you guys have any questions or concerns before? I'm no. so excited. Yeah, I really have no idea what I, to I, know, I have no idea what we're doing right like, Matt, Matt keeps saying that he's so excited, and he's like, ask, ask me questions. I'm like, I really cannot stress enough how little I know about this episode going yeah. into this. Yeah, that's why I'm excited I, I understand the, the premise of a draft, but I have no idea. All right. Let's just do it. All right. So here's the prompt, everybody. The non-specific Aerospanning Republic has tasked you to build a crew to explore the outer rim with the, to find the unknown. To find the known in the unknown. Cut that. Um, like anything in the galaxy, nothing is certain but the uncertain. To prepare for your journey, you're tasked with filling these specific positions. You need a leader, a point person, also known as the right-hand man, a pilot, a droid, and a bounty hunter, or an overall scoundrel. Accompanying you on this journey will also be a diplomat and a Jedi of your choosing. The rules. Number one. Since I made this list, I must go last in the first round. The person who will go first in the first round must be decided by a uh, best of three rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I have spoken. The second round will begin with the person who went second in the first round, and so on until everybody his crew is complete. This is the way. The only way this will differ is if you pick one person from the other pool. But if you do so, you forfeit your turn in the next round and must go last in the next round of the draft until uh, it resets the order. Uh, what is the other pool, you ask? The other pool is a pool of characters who you can defer to if you're not happy with your choices you have left in a certain category. This can only be used once, with the ex- exception of if you want to forego a category, you must have a good reasoning. And then at the very end of the draft, once everyone has gone, you may pick one person from the other pool. This is a risk, considering you won't know if someone else picks who you have in mind to pick from the other pool. Insert Star Wars reference here. Lastly, when you <laughs> lastly, when you choose from the other pool, you must have a good reasoning for your choosing that person in that category. Just say you couldn't put Bail Organa as a pilot. As a bonus, it's always fun to describe uh, why you chose that person and kind of let everybody everybody into your strategy or your thinking a little bit. Does that make sense? I think so. You I no, will, I'm it lost. Won't, it won't make sense you until really? you go into the who's in what pool. Okay, let's go over the who's in what pool All real right. quick. All right, sounds good. In this first category. We have a leader. And so I wanted to make um, every category a little hard. I didn't want to stack the category so everyone has, like, D- Darth Vader's in your crew and Han Solo and Din Djarin. And so I didn't really want to stack the categories like that. So there's options, I think, and there's a little bit of strategy I think you can have. So I think we should sit with it for a minute as well just so you can semi-strategize as well as myself what we can do. So in the leader category, we have Jin Urso, Kino Loy. Amlin Holdo, Alexander Callis. For the point, we have Nine Num, Zebrilius, and Avril Skeen. 
For the bounty hunter or overall scoundrel, we have Boba Fett, Kira, and Dengar. For the pilots, we have Tech, Snap Wexley, and Plo Koon. For the droids, we have K2SO, R5D4, and Chopper. For the diplomats, we have New Gunnery, Hondo Anaka, and Mon Mothma. <laughs> I love that Hondo is a <laughs> Yeah, me too. I thought it was funny. For the Jedi, we have Yaddle, Ahsoka Tano, and Kalorin Beck. Lastly, we have the ships. We have the Razor Crest, uh, the Royal Starship, and the Ghost. So, if you are not satisfied with any of these people, you can also, again, forego and pick from the other pool only once, or you can completely nix a category and pick from the other pool, and in that case, you must go dead last once everybody has gone and every position is filled. From the other pool, we have Landel Calrissian, Fives, Cobb Vanth, Kit Fisto, Ray, Bail Organa, Grief Karga, Crosshair, Fennec Shan, Din Djarin, Zori Bliss, Dio, L3, Harris and Dula, Wedge Antilles, and the Millennium Falcon. Some good picks in there. It's going to be hard not to dip in. This is also, we do are we, not have are we to allowed go to pick in any category? Any or are we going category, category by category? Nope, any category. Much like. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. Much, see, I'm so glad. Let's much, get into it. Much like the NFL draft that happened two to three months ago, you can go, you can pick a quarterback, <laughs> you can pick a kicker, which is what I would suggest, um, or anybody else. That's because you're a Cleveland Browns fan. <laughs> so, so are you. Get a kicker. <laughs> Cade York? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So. Best out of three, uh, rock, paper, scissors. Here we go. I was trying to come up with a witty Star Wars version of this, and I was like, I got nothing right now. <laughs> yeah, that would be way too confusing. <laughs> All right. Rock, so rock paper, shoot. scissors, shoot. Shoot? Yes. All right. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, rock, they tied paper, both scissors. Shoot. Both rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh! oh Luke got him with paper. Right. Let me narrate this. Luke won. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Whoa, it's oh, it's hitting up. Oh, it's All tied. Right. Luke had a scissor, and Max had a rock. All right, here we go. The final draw. Who's going to win? I'm going paper. Are you? Oh, he's right. doing the golden balls thing. Rock, paper, paper scissors, shoot. No! Oh, I lied! lied. Max I won. lied. Max would. Max won with rock. Luke went scissors, thinking that Max told the truth. If you have not checked out Golden Balls, that is a British TV show. <laughs> and there's a really famous YouTube clip that is really great. With the guy that broke the game. Yeah, but that's what you went for, right? That, was, that wasn't wrong in that. Oh, yeah. He thought he was in my head. No one's in here. Yeah. Not even myself. I believe in people. I regret nothing. I agree. I think I, I'm in the same camp as you. Did you watch Solo? Trust no one. Is that the X Files? What the Solo? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> what the? F- that was a good dry run. Do you guys want to start for real? Son of a. <laughs> no, we're going for real because I really fought hard for that because I really want the first pick and oh. I this might be this might be unpopular. I don't know if nope. this is what everyone else would Do go it. for first, but I am absolutely going for category and then person first. Let's lead with the category so we can have a moment of anxiety. I I'm going. Look, some of these categories have three. Some of these have four. There are yep. three of us drafting, Correct. right? Which means yep. that someone's going to get stuck with one of them. Correct. I am going for one of the three categories. Yep. I'm going to pick my diplomat first. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and I am absolutely taking Mon Mothma. Okay. The fact that she is in a category with Newt Gunray and Hondo Onaka is offensive. Well, I don't know about offensive. I think the person it is, is pretty, pretty smart. The fact that Bail Organa's in the other pool to to, to, to entice somebody <laughs> to do that. <laughs> well, someone can do that. All right. All right uh, Luke. So I get second pick because you get default last. I will also be going with a three banger. I'm going to take my point man, Zeb Aurelios. Yeah, that was I was debating between that one as that's well. A good one. That's a good that's a good one. I am going to go with a pilot. I'm gonna go with tech. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, I'm not I'm not too broken up with that. I I think I'd be comfortable with Snap or Plo Koon. My my tech theory would just be the fact that he can do, he can get you out of 99% of the situations. If not, you know he's sacrificing himself to get you out of there. <laughs> That's true. You got 100% grit. <laughs> exactly. So that was the first round, right? So yeah. now Luke, you start in the next one. Hmm. All right. All right. I think. So you said the Royal Starship is one of the ships. I believe the Queen Amidala's yep. Nubian cruiser. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go with the Ghost oh. for my number two choice. That is a good one. That is that'll, my that'll preferred ship as well. It's got a 
it's got to have offensive capabilities and enough room for a whole crew. Yes. The Razor, the razor it, Crest gets a little tight. It gets a little tight. <sighs> well, well, I'm going to... Can we argue now, or are we wait until we oh. have the full team to argue? No, we should argue during, yes. Because that is, that is a terrible pick. The Ghost is definitely the best of those three ships, the Razor Crest and the Royal Starship. Yeah, the Ghost is probably the best of the three, but barely. Those are both great ships. What are you going to do with a Nubian cruiser flying out to new lands? They're going to m- rob you as what? soon as you get there. What if they shoot you? You're going to hope R2-D2 comes and fixes your deflector shields because he's not going to be your droid. You know who else will, though? Tech, because he'll do anything for you. <laughs> you know who else will do anything for you? My second choice, K2SO. Mm. Mm, that's a good That's a good choice. Ah. I was debating between picking K2 or Ghost it's, for mine. Honestly, when the fact, I, I just I figured the ships would go last. Because I figured there's real there's really, to me, no bad ship. And I figured there's no real bad leader or ship in, this, in these categories. And I yeah. would have for sure thought that the ship would have gone, gone last. And now I kind of am heartbroken that the Ghost is gone this early, <laughs> to be a thousand percent no, honest. No, that was a strategical also, mistake. Just a re- reminder, don't forget to look in the other pool. Just, you know, just yeah. because we got some stuff. No, I, you know, I, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. All right, Max, you have Mon Mothma as your diplomat. Who are you surrounding her with? Rightfully so. With my uh, with my second pick, sixth overall, Max is picking Ahsoka Tano. Nice. That's a good pick. That's a great pick. If, if nothing else, like, it's debatable whether she would be more helpful or useful than Kellerin Beck or Yaddle, but just so much more how is that debatable (laughs) the only reason it's debatable (laughs) is because we know so much more about ahsoka like the little we know about yaddle and kellerin imply we know enough that they are as capable as ahsoka we know enough about yaddle to know that when we saw her she was clearly already a thousand years old because she didn't even survive the next whatever it was 10 years to attack the clones hey remember Era spanning, non-Pacific Republic is asking you. <laughs> that's true. I did notice you said that. <laughs> it doesn't matter what era you're in. That's my point. Yaddle is going to be old. There's nothing she's bringing to the true. table. Keller and Beck, you can make an argument for, but Ahsoka, because we know so much about her, we know exactly what she can do. Yes. Keller and, sure. Maybe he can do some of this stuff. Maybe he could also be a leader. Maybe he could also pilot. We don't know. You clearly have not watched Jedi Temple Challenge in its entirety. Who goes next? You? You go first, Matt? I just picked K2 or so. Sorry, I kind of got lost. I think it's I, I picked Ghost first in the second round, and then you picked K2. Max picked Ahsoka. Ahsoka. So it is me. Yeah, so now oh, Matt starts the third round. What a choice. What a choice that I am actually getting nervous about now. Oh, God, this is actually kind of really tough now, because I feel like a lot of the people that I would have been like, yes, that, that sounds great. I'm going to go and pick my Jedi, and I'm going to go Keller and Beck. Mm, that's a good choice. Are you happy so you have to then pick Kit Fisto and not Yaddle? I quite you can, like you can Yaddle. Pick Yaddle. I love Yaddle. T- I included Yaddle. Hey, yeah, go go for it. It makes it easier for the rest of us. Now, it is back to Maxwell mm-hmm. for his number one choice. Nope, not number one choice, but you know. Keller and Beck, while you decide, was only in a handful of scenes. And yet, I think, save the day. And Am I the only one that has seen Jedi Temple Challenge? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, to go to, to ignore what Luke said like two minutes ago. <laughs> I think Keller and Beck, my, my theory with Keller and Beck is... You know they you call him the Sabered Hand, right? Nothing. No. That is incredible. I love that name. I, it is really cool. I think, gonna, hearing for the first time, very cool. I think Keller and Beck is... The Jedi, to me, right, are like... I don't know. They're not like the leaders, right, necessarily. They're, I mean, literally, when they're in the Republic, they are basically guards right they're like yeah, keepers of peace exactly and so i think for keller and beck for me will be that exact right person to do that job with i think that person right then will also know their place step up to the plate when they have to but also kind of be unassuming when they need to be as well we we saw him uh save grogu and i feel like when you're on a mission like that you need somebody who can get you out of a tight spot and so far i think Ke- uh, tech k2so and keller and beck can all do that for you what is? How about you guys? Your guys is. I know Max. You're, if you're, you want to go, please go. I, but I'm, thus far, what is your th- what is your theory with Mon Mothma and Ahsoka? Actually, that seems pretty straightforward. That's a great pick. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about synergy. I'm trying to get some good synergy I, on here. Zep you the can. Ghost? Are you just building rebels? <laughs> I I was worried I was gonna be just building the rebels crew for a minute there. <laughs> Wait, are you? If you pick Callus and Chopper, I'm gonna I'm gonna freak. <laughs> No, I'm going to I'm going to keep going. I'm going to pick my pilot and I'm going to keep going with this uh great synergy, this light side force using synergy and go with Plukoon as my pilot. Oh, Plukoon. 
That's such a mistake. We only that see the pilot once a in the saga, and he blows up. Because he, he was sucks. betrayed, not because of his talent. And why do you think he was on that mission? Probably because he's the best uh, uh, pilot that the Jedi have. And not that I want to throw the, just kind of give some thinking into what, when we were, I was making this list. That is a really interesting choice, Maxwell, specifically for you. Because you could have instantly nixed the Jedi category. And then just did Plo Koon because he's also a Jedi. So now I got double Jedi. Exactly. Dumb pilot choice, but great Jedi choice. It's a great team choice. Yeah, I can see that. I guess I could see that. But he oh. can fly the ship. I don't know. If he does have a good relationship with Ahsoka. That's good synergy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Look, who, Ahsoka real quick, has good synergy uh, with Mon. We'll be fine. You have Zeb and the Ghost. Who else do you have that I missed? That's all. That is all. I'm making my third selection now. You are. And indeed. I am going into the side pool, and I am going oh, to be taking dang. Bail Organa as my diplomat. Oh, uh, you are a smart because, person. Because, yeah, like what Max said, the diplomat category is scary. Yeah. I, I do not want Newt or Hondo, and Bail Organa is probably the best that I could have gotten. Haha, you have activated my trap card. So he's picked from the other pool. He has picked from the other pool, so that means he instantly goes last in the next round. And it the order resets. So then I go first. Yeah. I don't like the how you're excited about this. <laughs> Um, Everything's turning up, Max. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, you know, Kelleran Beck really only shines when he's teaching younglings. That's his role in Jedi Temple Challenge. That's why he rescued Grogu and some undefined others. And I don't, I'm not seeing any kids in your crew, Matt. As a stay-at-home dad, I can tell you it's tough to interact with adults when you hang out with kids all day. They're they're too young to go out on a uh, potentially year-spanning. Oh, I'm I'm not I'm not faulting you. I, yeah, don't bring <laughs> kids here, but don't bring the babysitter either. <laughs> Let's talk when you have a Jedi in your ship. Max has got two over here, Luke. You're jumping <laughs> the ball. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with a uh, I'm gonna have to go with a droid next. Smart. And uh, because I'm going with such a, a force using team, such a force user heavy team, I'm gonna have to pick the only droid, not the only droid, the droid that has the most experience with Jedi and force users, I'm gonna go Chopper. He already knows Ahsoka. He's had experience with Kanan yeah. and Ezra. Ezra. So whose lightsabers are blue and green. Not and green like I <laughs> didn't <laughs> And no, he's nothing. he he you so you're going back. If I do get stuck with the Nubian cruiser, which is totally fine, that is probably the best worst option in this whole draft right now. There is not a single hey. thing that Chopper can't do. We've seen him do it all. You don't have to argue, Chopper. I agree. I am also really glad that you said Chopper because I already wrote Chopper down for you because I was like, I assume this is what he's going to say when he said <laughs> Droid. Um, for my next choice, I'm going to go Kira because she, yes, she is a scoundrel and. Not so much bounty hunter, right? She's a scoundrel, mm -hmm. but I think she also fits into the diplomat category. Mm -hmm, and yeah. with Hondo and Newt Gunnery, I I'm going to go Kira because I think that's my save out of that without having to dip into the other pool. And with that being said, Bail Organa's already gone, so I'm going Kira. That's so fair. You're, you're still picking Kira for your your bounty hunter slash overall scoundrel. Yeah, I think okay. she just much like Plo Koon is also a Jedi. Yeah. Um, I think Kira can also kind of be seen as a diplomat i think some of these people kind of dip into some other categories as well so i um that's a strong pick i i, I really wanted to pick kira too because uh in the comics especially she is very multifaceted she yeah. gets into a fight with darth vader and she holds her own pretty well so kira kira is a good pick thank you yeah i was thinking about taking kira just because i was worried max was going to but matt you don't even read the comics you don't know anything about kira and i don't I have like to defend tone. it now so <laughs> i that's that's a she Sweat actually never fights streak. Darth Vader. I just <laughs> laid another trap card. I'm All right, LT. I'm just kidding. Who's your, who's your fourth? All right. For my fourth, I have not looked at it at all. What have you been doing? <laughs> Listening to everyone else. <laughs> this is too hard. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do it. I'll go back to the pool for the second time. Don't. You can't say it right now. You have to wait until every person is gone and every category is filled. And then you can fill that last slot. And so you can't say who it is. You're like, I'm going to go for the next... The next pool. Does okay. that make sense? Okay. I'm going for the next pool. Okay. Next pool. So if someone tries to take this character... They're gone. And no longer... That's why it's a risk. Okay. All right. All right. And even if this character is taken, there are other pool characters that I'd be fine to get as well. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. I'm going with it. Sweet. All right. Luke forfeits it. All right, everybody. I am going to go to the other pool as well and take out the point... And I'm going to go Cobb Vanth for my point. I think Cobb Vanth is also a big teamster as well. 
Um, I think everybody in this list is is in in mine. Oh, just uh, uh, um, I have Calvin Beck, Tech K two S O, and Kira, and I think Kyle Vantel fit in nicely with them. Uh, he also is kind of a marksman, right? So he is, uh, I think, a great right hand man, much like he was with Dinjarin. He's a good point, but he also kind of doubles as a little. What is that face? He's not a better marksman than Cad Bane. He also shoots second. I like Cobb Vanth. Don't act like you guys don't like Cobb Vanth also. He does have limitless charisma. I will give him that. Charisma off the chart. However, I completely disagree that he's a a teamster. He's not a team player at all. He is a one-man show. He is is literally the marshal of a deadbeat town. Like, I can't imagine a more solitary job in the world. Oh, no. In order to be a... Your your team has no synergy right now. Your your team is full of loners. Go over that list again. Who's on your team right now? I have tech. Tech. Who is a part of a group of five? Tech, who's borderline no, autistic and he can't not. he can't express his emotions or work well with the team. That was his whole arc. Just like all he of isn't us, isn't a team player, and then he sacrifices no. himself for the team. Exactly. So you're wrong there. He's a group. He's in a group of he's in a group of five people, and then six if you include uh, uh, Omega. Omega. Um, you have K2SO, who's like best friends with Andor, and then sacrifices himself as well. You have Kellerin Beck, who also sacrifices, him, who takes the lead and saves uh, Grogu, and then you have Kira, who. He is debatable, but she still sticks to her guns. That's Kellerin Beck, who prefers hanging out with children than adults. That's multiple wild you. cards you have on your team. Kira and wild K2SO, cards? I wouldn't trust them. Look, individually, all solid picks. As a mm-hmm. team, terrible synergy. Oh, I don't know. K2SO is basically a bully. Like He's going to be verbally abusing Kellerin Beck, and he's going to make him cry. Understandably. K2SO is going to do whatever he wants. He's the leader of the group. Is he your leader? No. <laughs> you're not. You're not. No one here is prioritizing synergy right now. You're going right. to need one hell of a leader, Matthew. I, this is this is why you need team synergy, right? And this is mm-hmm. why for my next pick, I am going as well to the pool. And I am picking my point, my right-hand man. And who do you want? What kind of danger are we getting into? What is the most dangerous thing you can think of? Cobb Vanth, I don't to know, in a tornado. <laughs> the most dangerous thing you can do is walk up to somebody you know to be a Sith Lord and try to arrest them. And who was the right-hand man in that operation? The only Jedi that held their ground for more than one second is Kit Fisto. So I am taking Kit Fisto to be my right-hand man. Wait, why Dang. Why Kit Fisto? Because he is under, just to point out, he is under the Jedi category in the other category. In the other category. So why is he the right-hand man versus, you're stacking, you're, you're doing Madden all 99s on your players over here. You're just like, Jedi, that's, Jedi, Jedi. That's the game. How are you going to beat this? If I get Kit because, Pisto, Plo Koon, Ahsoka, all being, not led by Mon Mothma, but being her as a diplomat, but who's also pretty much a leader as well. This is this is a stacked team. No, Kit Fisto is a right-hand man. You never see him do anything on his own. In the movies, when he's mm-hmm. uh, he's always... Uh, he's assisting the other Jedi in the uh, Colosseum on Geonosis. But well, do you think he's assisting, he's... or do you think he's just standing his own? No, he was first in the charge against the I droids was... on Geonosis. He leads the cavalry. Yeah. He's a point man. Wait, no. That's, he's he, not, he, he's he, not the leader, obviously. He's not Mace Windu who walks up to Kalendooku. So you agree that he can be exactly. a point? He was the, he was he was the, the number right... two man in the Battle of yeah. Geonosis, He was the, He was right. the right-hand man to, to Mace Windu when they went to go arrest the Senate. All right. You have, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll allow it. You can do Kit Fisto as your right-hand man. With that being said, you guys ever get stranded, you are never going to procreate with all these Jedi on here. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke, after Max is throwing it, uh, let's see what you got. Okay. I'll take my bounty hunter to go Boba Fett. Nice. There's It's... That's a safe choice, but there's the, obviously nothing wrong with it. You know, he's one of the most effective and ruthless bounty hunters in the galaxy. He is triumphant in the War of the Bounty Hunters and captures Han Solo. Yes. Anything else to add? And you think he's going to work well with Keller and Beck or what? I don't have Keller and he Beck. He doesn't need to because he he's on my team. He would oh, work well with Kara Zabarellios and Bail Organa, who are my other two teammates right now. And he would arm the nose cannon on the ghost quite well. You know what else he would do? Be a great pilot, Luke. Boba Fett? Yes. He's a good pilot. I'm just trying to help you out here. He'd be a great pilot. I'm just saying, if you wanted to forgo for Snap, you can use Boba Fett as your pilot. Snap's a pretty good pilot. I'm just... He also dies, though, if that's your argument with Plo Koon. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. But not the only time you see him fly. Gah, I gotta... I gotta be competitive here i really want to defend snap because when you said that i was like i bet he's the last to go and i also would be very okay with having him on my team who snap yeah yeah me too i think that the, the, again honestly, i'm pulling in information from the comics he's great the, he's great in the comics i have not read the aftermath trilogy yet and so i'm hesitant to pick snap but it looks like i'm gonna be getting them just <laughs> you're, you're in good hands or you can forego for, um anyway so real quick just to go through everyone's list one more time 
I can go first, just to see what everyone, who everyone has and also what the positions they are. For me, I have Tech as my pilot. I have K2SO as my droid. I have Kellen and Beck as my Jedi. I have Kira as my bounty hunter slash overall scoundrel. And then I have Cobb Vanth as my point. Okay, Move. I got Garazeb Aurelios running point. Boba Fett is my bounty hunter. The Ghost is our ship. And Diplomat Bail Organa. That's a great team. That's a lot of headstrong people. No one's going to ever agree on anything on that team. Max, I'm not, you're, yours is my least favorite. I get excited when I hear Luke's. I'm not, I'm not here to have fun. I'm here to win. And when you have Kit Fisto as your right-hand man, Plo Koon as your pilot, Chopper as your droid, Mon Mothma as your diplomat, and Ahsoka as your Jedi, you're going to be set for anything. Yeah, that's a great team. I take back everything I just said when you set them up back-to-back. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, I still like mine the best, but I, I there's no real bad choice here. Unless... I think we've all played this game very well. There's a there was a world when you're like, yes, I guess I'll have to go Avril Skeen, uh, no offense to Snap, or like Newt Gunnery or something. Like you could have been with like a very lackluster, but I think so far we have uh kind of gotten on the woods with potentially having a a bit of a weak link. I don't I think we all have a pretty good Yeah, I don't think anyone has a weak link yet. I don't think so either. But let's find out in this next round. If hypothetically mm-hmm. Somebody took Luke's pick out of the other pool. Yeah. Would he have to wait until the end to say it, or would he get to say it as soon as somebody else took it? No, he can pick another person from that pool. I mean, he can be like, if you were like, oh, I pick, just say L3. And he's like, oh, I want to pick L3. That's all. And then in the last round, he just have to pick somebody else. Okay. Is it L3? Um, when we get to the Kit last Fisto. round, I'll only have one spot remaining. And so yeah. if it was Kit Fisto and... I get to the end, and I oh, I guess I would take Yaddle then. Okay, never mind. I'm good. Or you can take Ray. Or Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting I that you said someone... Yaddle over Ray. I mean, I assume someone's going to take Ray. I don't think so. We, 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 he's Jedi full up, and I don't want another one. Are you kidding me? Uh, I guess we both have, or you both have pilots, but I, I'd say Ray is the best pilot that's on in this draft right now. All right, for my next pick, I will go ahead and take my leader. I'm going to go with Jyn Erso. Oh, very nice. Very jealous. Didn't I, see that coming. Between <laughs> I, it's tough. I, I I don't want Callus because he has a hard time rallying people to his cause. He was kind of a deserter of the Empire, and then when he joined the Rebels, it's like, yeah, but you still committed genocide on the Lasat people, and mm-hmm. so it's 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 just hard for him to really be a good leader. Holdo is a great leader. She's not that good at much else, whereas Jin is like also a great fighter and a great mm-hmm. you know smug, uh, scoundrel. Yep. And Kino Loy really only leads when his life is on the line, and he adamantly opposed to it when it's just neutral times. Yeah. So, I, I went with Jin. I think it's a very smart choice. Now I have to rethink my uh, <laughs> I have to rethink some stuff. <laughs> I didn't put any other leaders in here um, besides who was on there. All right, so now that I know that Luke might pick Ray, and I feel like this leader team, you just said all the negatives to all the leaders, so I think I'm just going to go through out loud and say the positives of all these re- leaders. I think Kino Loy can rally a lot of people. Yes, he's in jail, and do we know what he's in prison for? No, I don't think so. I'm going to say it's something really bad. And so uh, Holdo, I think, also sacrifices herself, and I think plays things really close to the chest. So I also think she can double in the diplomat category. And I also think Callus, at, by the end of Rebels, yes, he's had a really rocky path, but I think he is on a road to redemption, and beyond that, he fits into the Rebels crew really well. And I think he can also, he, I think he can rally people. I think he is a good leader, and I think he's the glue, which I think is the key to a good leader. So I'm going to go Callus for my leader. That was my really? last person. Yep. I did not, when I when I was making those lists, I didn't, I really didn't really think who I was going to pick, but I was like, out of all, out of all these characters, I was like, Jin might be the leader, right? Uh, for me. Obviously, that is gone now, and I had to mm-hmm. rethink my strategy. But I do like Kalos, because I do like the redemption arc. I think he has some insider information. If you're ever caught in a tight spot, he can also use his uh, empire knowledge as well and kind of be able to play both sides while sticking true. Kalos is a good leader when he's in the empire. Now that he's going to be a rebel, he's not going to be a leader of the rebels. He has to relearn how to be a leader without doing it the imperial way. Which is exactly why this mission is perfect for him. 
Okay, you're getting you're getting a first time learning opportunity guy yep. coming no. in here. I'm taking. No, you you got to go through all sorts of training and I'm protocols the, to be a, re, a, a rebel leader. What do you, you know don't? anything it's about the rebel. onboarding process? The, I'm sure there's all sorts of. Uh, uh, you want to talk to me about the onboarding videos. process? <laughs> if anything, I got that onboarding process knowledge. Reality onboarding process inner <laughs> inner workings of a of a company. <laughs> you can't you can't go from a genocidal imperial uh, goon. By the mm-hmm. way, let's not act like he was a great leader for the mm-hmm. Empire either. Even when he was with the Empire, he was barely a leader, all right? He was a glorified right-hand man. <laughs> all right, Max, go go with your next bad choice. I, go with Ray. No. Just stack I'm, the I'm, Jedi. I'm picking I'm picking the ship. I'm going with the crest. That's give, smart. Give me the that is, crest. That is smart. That is smart. You can't fit your whole crew in there, you nerd. Oh, yes, we can. You're going to have two people in the bathroom alone. You remember when Mando and Frog Lady were flying sublight and they just had to sit in the cockpit? Frog Lady's like three feet tall and they barely fit. The remember when Mando helped Bill Burr and company go to that one place? Mayfield? Yeah. Migs Mayfield? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's not act like <laughs> Bill Burr is some <laughs> unknown person. No, you're just attacking, so we're attacking back. Luke, let's team up on Max this, in this episode. The, the Razor Crest I'm is the one you guys Achilles should be attacking. Heel. I definitely have the best crew and ship so far. You do not. There is no way you think you have the best ship. I absolutely have the best ship. The Razor Crest. It gets one shot while it was parked in neutral. Like it's not even a cool story, let alone a cool, useful ship. The Razor Crest. First off, we said we were spanning time, right? Because we don't even know where we are exactly. A lot of these characters span different timelines. Uh, so the Razor Crest we know is an older model. What was it like in its heyday? Remember in Solo when you saw the Falcon for the first time and you were like, whoa, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. If we're going to do this, all right, then I pick Teenager Yaddle and she has amazing abilities and she didn't have to walk with a limp and she was super youthful and energetic. That's what you're going with Yaddle? No, I'm saying I couldn't because that's stupid because we're playing hypotheticals then. (laughs) If we don't adhere to any sort of rules, then this is all just nothing. No, the Razor Crest got Din Djarin through some pretty rough times before he met Grogu, all right? If it weren't for that ship, Din Djarin would not be around. And the only way they were able to to take that ship down was by blowing it up from a Star Destroyer in low orbit because they were never it able to kill it in combat. It was an Imperial Light Cruiser. An Imperial Max. Light Cruiser from low orbit. That's the second time it got taken apart. Remember when the Jawas just took it apart on a Sunday afternoon because they had nothing better to do? That just shows you how versatile this ship is. You can you can tear it apart and put it back together and it still works just as good as new. Yeah, that, that's what I like in my ship. Once it's been t- torn apart and put back together. Perfect. Hey, someone's about to take the Royal Starship. One ship, one shot to the, the hull of that um, deflector shield or whatever it was. Oh, they were traveling through an entire Trade Federation blockade. It was more than one shot. We're preemptively attacking Matt for his pick because he hasn't picked it yet. You just want it to be more than True. one shot because the Razor Crest was literally one shot. From an Imperial light cruiser because they couldn't attack it in, in combat. They couldn't kill it fairly. That's like saying, oh, your person sucks because they died in his sleep. Like, well, yeah, because if he was awake, no one can take him down. Whose turn is it? <laughs> is it mine? Yeah. I will forego to pick the other pool at the end. After Luke Taylor. So much mystery surrounding this. All right. So then we're starting the next round, and you pick... No, you can't pick first. I cannot. Max picks first again. Yes. Did I pick first that time? I am so sorry in advance. Okay. I feel like this is easy. I I am confident that I won this. Is there a prize? There's no winners. For the leader. (laughs) (laughs) But there's losers. Um, You're going to pick Kino Loy. Yes. Kino Loy, as soon as you guys picked Jyn Erso and Callus, I was like, all right, well, I'll save my leader for last because all, that's an hey, easy pick. All I'll say is Callus never got captured and put in prison for literally an eternity where Kino Loy did. Uh, he deserved it, though. We just said that he was a genocidal maniac just because. Oh, I'm not saying what he did was right. I'm just saying he never got caught for it versus Kino Loy, who clearly got caught for it instantly, I'm going to assume. But Callus isn't a leader, though. Sim- similar to Callus, most of Kino Loy's leadership experience comes from working the men on level seven to make tools for the Empire and then zapping the ones that work the least hard. So that's pretty dark and not someone that I really want to follow. Just because he has one good rally and call at the end of his life, you know, he's a great character. Is it leader? He had to have a lot of help from Andor. Otherwise, he's, he would have done literally nothing and just died get, quietly after working himself to death for the rest of his life. He's going to get a lot of help. You don't think there's any leadership skills between Kit Fisto, Plo Koon, Mon Mothma, and Ahsoka? There's a lot of leadership skills, but when you 
have a designated leader is just going to lead to a lot of friction with all these different people trying to lead. And Kino Loy is the least qualified among them. And he's going to have to be the one that say, no, you have to follow me. Kino Loy ran the tightest ship with a bunch of other inmates in this prison. He was able to keep all of them in line. Of course he's going to be able to make decisions and keep everyone else in line. I don't know. The threat of death works a lot more well with prisoners than it does with Jedi. I was this close to including uh, Clone 99 as a leader just to see what anyone would, <laughs> anyone would do. First overall pick. <laughs> First overall pick, Clone 99. Uh, okay. Uh, Luke uh, Taylor. I have the next pick. I'm going to go with my droid. R5-D4. I was not worried about this category at all because it had three great selections. So R5 is not just a great droid because, you know, he helps in The Mandalorian Season 3 with relaying intel to the Let New Republic talk. as well as... I agree with Luke. As well as No, the you do not. Yeah, I love... Yes, I love R5. Right, hold on. Let Luke keep going. Let Luke not keep to going. mention, I will say in... The 40th anniversary of A New Hope from a certain point of view, it's revealed that R5-D4 did have... The fact that he said other point of view is very funny. <laughs> he did have a lot of agency with his decision, not accident, to blow his motivator and not go with Luke and Owen on Tatooine. He said he knew that R2-D2 was destined for a great mission. He knew that R2-D2 was more important than him and had to get out of the Jawas right now. And so he sacrificed himself. And that is the kind of player that I need on my team, someone that is willing to lay on the line and let the other man cross cross over him. And that is R5. The fact that he had to go to a short story yeah. from one of the A Certain Point of View books yeah. just shows you how much he's reaching for this one. That category I, had two great picks and R5-D4. He was, there is no way yeah. you are putting R5 anywhere close to Chopper or K2SO's level. I agree, and I also feel like L3 is obviously t- ten times better. With the, And I also think I would pick L3 over Chopper, I think, as well. Nah, that's not true. I mean, well, I would definitely I think pick R5 R5's... over Chopper because what are we talking like as a character or as a unit on this team? I think Chopper both. is kind of a liability. He is a jerk. He likes to harm people and distract from the mission for fun. All three, all, all, all everything you just said also applies to L three. I think <laughs> it, it could apply to L three, <laughs> but I'm just thinking in terms of uh, it also applies to K two S O to an extent. One thousand percent. Not R five D four. That man, that droid mm-hmm. is on a mission, and it's always the mission comes first with him. Yeah, he is the teammate talk we about want. His missions. Let's talk about R five D four on Mandalore. Go ahead, you talk him up. Talk on about Mandalore, how good he was a Mandalorian. Oh, he well on Mandalore or in the Mandalorian. Both. It's basically the right. same. <laughs> well. Well, no, because most of his content uh, of his contribution comes with reporting back to Carson Teva on the Mandalorian's hideout on that dinosaur planet, which he did, which was very useful for the mm-hmm. galaxy and for the New Republic. And then on Mandalore, he's he, a narc. He is not a narc. He's reporting on. He finked on a group of criminals. No, because he never had their allegiance. They thought he was just a dumb droid, like. All of you think, apparently, and they thought that they had nothing to worry about with him. Mm-hmm. He was just an informant that no one thought anything of. That's not a narc. He did not betray their trust. He snuck under the radar of their trust. And <laughs> <laughs> The difference there is so thin. <laughs> it matters, though. It's important. And on, the, on Mandalore, mm-hmm. yes, technically... He did not read the toxins level of the atmosphere. <laughs> Technically, the Mandalorian had to go out and check himself. <laughs> it was R5-D4 that gave him the confidence to do this. You know what? Luke Luke deserves a, a solid pass by you, Max, because that was really Man- good. Mando showed up to Pelimato to get IG-11 fixed, and Peli said, No, take R5-D4. He's just as good. And you know what Mando said? Okay. <laughs> so, that's a glowing endorsement if you ask me. I love it. That's, I think that's a great... He's the best defense of R5-D4, I he, think, ever. He Not only is, would I say it's the best defense of R5-D4, I would say it's the best argument for who has the best droid that we've heard today. No. Uh, no. <laughs> I, can't, I can't agree with that, but I do agree that was a great argument. I also do like uh, to, I, I like I do like R5, and I like also his design is really cool, too. He's very 80s. Um, anyway, um, that was... <laughs> that was um, I just uh, lost my entire train of thought after that <laughs> argument. The fact that you said he, Mandalorian didn't had to go out and technically check himself because he didn't do the job right, but it gave him the confidence <laughs> was the key. He, uh, he wanted to go there with a droid, and then when he got there, he said, you know what? 
I can do this myself. You know what? I honestly want to start the episode with that. And so when someone listens to this beginning, they're going to be like, wait, how do we get there? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I think it's the best thing uh, on this podcast so far. All right. So you guys have both chosen your second picks from the pool. And we're down to our last pick, right? So that means two more picks. We have two more picks, technically. Yes, I believe there's eight categories oh, total. I just started that last but round. That's why. But I will think. also gonna. I'm gonna go for. So the other pool, I I made these rules, and I was. I just want to confirm. You can only pick the other pool in a category once, but I'm gonna forego another category and to pick from the other pool at the very end. So it'll go Luke, and then myself, and then myself again. If unless, and then he's since, fighting for scraps. So I forego my next pick, Max. It is up to you again. All right, well, I don't know where to go from here because my last pick, I also want to defer to the uh, the other pool. All right, for my second to last pick, I will take my... So this one has to be either Snap or Yaddle. Or can I defer for a third time? You can you can defer, yeah. Uh, wait, it, is it wait, for a second? You've only deferred once. Yeah, it'd be for your second. No, I took Bail Organa. Yeah, but that's not. Yeah, deferring, but you though. you deferred it. So then you you pick that person, and then you got to go last. But now okay, you can. Okay, I'll defer again then. All right, you are deferring. So that means Luke will go. I will go twice in a row. You will go, and then Luke will go again. So now I think we're in deferments, right? Or no? Are we in the other pool? Yeah, we're in the other pool. All right. All so right. Luke, this is from when you deferred the a, a long time ago. This is like your fourth round pick. Who yes. is your fourth round pick, my friend? It is Ray Skywalker. Yep, that's she... a great call. As a Jedi and as a pilot is elite, bar none. As a Jedi, she's a member of the Dyad, the other member who has now passed. So she has all of the power of a Dyad. Once in a not or seen for generations. Mm, I don't think that's how it works. I'm pretty sure he transferred his life essence into her and then passed away. And now she has all the power of both of them combined. Um, that's a shame. I, I knew you were going with Ray or Kit Fisto. It was 50-50, and I tried taking Kit Fisto off the table. Or maybe I did. Maybe I, you're just not admitting that. I am a fan of Kit Fisto, but Ray is the clear choice for the Jedi I would want to take on a mission. She says, says is, the guy with a blog called the Kit Fisto Manifesto. She qualifies as leader, <laughs> point, scoundrel because of her time on Jakku as a smu- as a scavenger. That's scoundrelous. That's, that's pretty scandalous. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, the only thing she doesn't fit is a droid, and that's okay because yeah. I got the best droid too. So, easy pick for Ray to round out my crew. I think mm-hmm. that's a good pick. Now I have two to go in a row, which I feel pretty good about. So, for my other pick, I am going to go the Millennium Falcon. You all were giving me shit for the starship. It would definitely would have been a mistake to take the Royal Star Cruiser at this point. Yes, I disagree. The Royal Star Cruiser is a strong pick. You were, what? You were just making fun of it like a, two seconds ago. It, I mean, well, that was back me, when he thought it was going to be yours. It is not better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is not better than the Razor Crest. Don't get me wrong, but the Nubian Star Cruiser is a very strong third choice. I would just like to say the Millennium Falcon is the best of all these ships. The Millennium Falcon is literally as useful in the, as the Ghost in every way, except it can't scramble its signature, and it doesn't have the Phantom Pod also. I have nothing against well, the were, Ghost. You were giving crap about the Razor Crest for being able to fall apart so easily. It is a running joke throughout every single Star Wars that features the Millennium Falcon that it is a piece of junk and is always falling down and breaking down. Hey, and, but actually, it never what, actually breaks. As a bonus, I also get L3, <laughs> I guess, technically. And what kind of... <laughs> think, about the, think about the user manual that you're going to have to get with the Millennium Falcon. That thing is just far too complex. That's Remember, true. Don't who's, forget. Your, who's your pilot, Matthew? Do you have anyone that can handle the Millennium Falcon? I have Tech. Mm, I don't know about that. Not quite Ray or Han. Tech will be great. And it'll also go great with my next choice. Because I'm going to pick uh, Harrison Dula as my next choice. Because I also think not only is she a great pilot, but she's also a great leader. But you already have a pilot and a leader. So on what basis are you taking her? I think she can do a bit of both. I think, But, if, but you don't need either. I so think I don't need either. So that you've laid out, I don't see this what, is how true. she's valid. I also think, though, that tech... Who's the last role that you need to fill? Um, te- well, so a diplomat? Technically, I went through, through Kira as my diplomat as well, is who I would kind of consider a little bit of a gray area. So you don't have a bounty hunter? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll submit to that, even though I like uh, Hera a lot, and I'll go Din Djarin then for the bounty hunter, because I also think like, he, can, he can be a leader. Um, he'll get there, because um, I think he might be a better leader than he is a bounty hunter. Um, eh, that's not totally true. His, his leadership skills are quite 
mid. But I'll it doesn't say. matter because I think he'll work well with Callus. Uh, That's true. I do so think he'll work I'm well gonna with I'm going to go with Dinjar in that, even though I yep. like Hera a lot. He'll work well with Keller and Beck, shared love of Grogu. That's a good conversation starter. Keep, please keep going. I'm loving everything you're saying about my team because <laughs> um, it gives me a lot of confidence because I like both of your teams, but I can't say anything good about Max's now since he's being so defensive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. Gloves are off, baby. I, I'm Max. This is your last choice. I'm being shockingly quiet right now because that just threw everything off for me. You wanted Din Djarin last, yeah. And uh, I thought, why I thought, am I not surprised? I thought that no one else was going to be able to grab him. I thought you had Kira as your bounty hunter. She's in the bounty hunter category. But I she... think. All right. I'll, listen, listen. She is in the sake for the sake of being honest. I'm just going to say that this is the one slot on my team that's not. Who are you? You're feeling a bounty hunter? Not optimal, but it is still solid. I am going to go with Fennec Shand. Fennec Shand. Oh, yeah. the and only Max thing is I... stumble comes. The only thing I know about her is that she was able to live a really long time because she's in the Clone Wars and the Mandalorian. Honestly, that's all the proof you need. Great choice, Max. <laughs> and constantly <laughs> able to hold her own. Let's not forget that she was the only good part of the Book of Boba Fett. She was not. I Do you remember talking with me about the Book of Boba Fett before it came out? And I said, this is a risky show because we already know a lot about Boba Fett. This show is going to live and die with Fennec Shand. And if she's a great character, it'll be a great show. And if she's not a very interesting character, it will not be a very interesting show. She and was a great character. They just didn't give her the spotlight that she deserved. No, she had the opportunity and she lost it. She no. was not the character that that show needed. She was not the character. She was not interesting enough to carry any sort of story mm. arc that we needed. I like needed. Fennec Shand. I'd also like to point out, Max, that you could have swooped in and agreed with me about Hera, and then you could have had Din Djarin easily. All it took was a little push and I, from Luke to, to bend over, and he would have uh, been fine. I, I had a whole argument about Hera. I should have... Uh, it would have been two-faced, because I would have been like, oh, yeah, I'll go with Hera. And then I was going to lay this whole argument on you about how she's only trained on the Ghost and not the Millennium Falcon, and that those are both Corellian ships, and it's going to be so similar, but very different. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like going on a Windows PC after you've been on a Mac your entire life. You're just like, everything's the same, but nothing is. Yeah, and you can pick it up in 10 minutes. No. Oh, no. There's a learning curve there. Yeah. Harrow, <laughs> Harrow is not going to be a good pick for you, buddy. You, you made the right choice going with Din Djarin. It would I like Harrow. Um, are we ready for my final pick? Because yeah. This is the last pick yes, in the it draft. Is. This is in the actually the pick draft. I made in turn four, who I okay. wanted. And it is Harris and Dula. That's why I pushed no! back so much. I just said that she would go well with the ghost. No. She goes great with the ghost. She is the leader that will complement Jin Erso, but not overshadow her. She will be the Cassian to Jin Erso's leadership that she needs to keep going. Yeah. She will no, be. Don't agree with anything he's saying. She will work well with Ray. She will work well with Boba Fett. She's not above working with scoundrels and deskevious people like Vizago. She works with him multiple times throughout Rebels. She has a history. Her point man, Zeb, obvious synergy right there. I think my team has by far the most obvious pros and almost none of the cons that you no. guys have. You you have good synergy with Hera, Ghost, and Zeb. But that's it. You're just thinking so small. Expand your mind to who you've seen on screen together and allow yourself to have some imagination, Maxwell. Think about how they would interact with Boba Fett. Think about how they would interact with Rey. Ray is similar to Kanan in a sense that they don't follow the order. I mean, it's based it's a victim of their circumstances, the era that they're born into, but they have a lot of independent thinking, which a lot of your Jedi don't do, don't exhibit, and they have great they're they're able to Excuse work whoa. outside the <sighs> order to get things done. Whereas your Jedi are really boxing themselves into a very strict adherence to a code that is vague and ill-defined and led to their downfall. Okay, a couple of things. First off, I think it's Boba Fett. You have Boba Fett on your team? Mm -hmm. He's throwing everything off. Boba Fett has never worked well with as a team. He's always by himself. Besides you know, the Fennec Shand and all of... Yeah, uh, Fennec, Shan, Fennec Shan is his right-hand man when he's trying to lead everything, when he's trying to take over Tatooine to be his own little crime syndicate or whatever. Or when he's working with Aura Singh and Dengar and Bosk in The Clone Wars, or Jango Fett in uh, the you, Attack of the Clones. And he has it, a history of working with people, and he's and, pretty good well, at and it. And he any got of those pretty Jedi? comfy with that Sarlacc. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? He got pretty comfy with that Sarlacc. He's going back in a Sarlacc with this team. This is going nowhere. And he doesn't like Jedi.
He's not going to get along with Rey. There's going to be constant infighting. How do you not get along with Rey? She's delightful. Because she's a Jedi. He has a beef. All yeah. I'm saying is it'll make they a great literally movie because you need conflict. His father. They beheaded his father. They were they fought him in the Dune Sea, which is basically the reason he fell into the Sarlacc pit. No, that was all Han Solo. He does not hold that against Luke he Skywalker. He would not have been there if Luke Skywalker wasn't there. Why? You know, no, if he doesn't, I agree. If he, if he worked at the Sith when he was a bounty hunter and full bad, if you're taking Boba Fett in the fact of the new, in the book of Boba Fett or Mandalorian season two, I, I think that he, if he got along with the Sith, he could be fine with the Jedi now. He's kind of turned his, a new leaf, right? Yeah, yeah. He snorted that bug scorpion and then he is good at working with teammates now. That is how that works. That was his story arc, and it's valid so for the I, team I've assembled. I, I think you're scrambling, and I think it is evident in the fact that you claim that none of my Jedi, which I have three, by the way, are critical thinkers. Um, Ahsoka Tano, the only one who broke that box, who left the Jedi, who abolished the code to follow her own path, she is the epitome of a critical thinker. Max, you officially have won the draft, which means next draft you get to go last every single round. <laughs> and I would still win. So we're pr- running pretty long, obviously. So let's just go through and say our who are, who is on our crew, uh, fi- uh, in the final uh, in the final incarnation of it. I will go first. I have Tech, K two S O, Kelvin Beck, Kira, Cobb Vanth, Callus, and the Millennium Falcon with Din Djarin. And I have aboard the Ghost, Jedi Ray Skywalker led by Diplomat Bail Organa with droid R5-D4, piloted by Harris and Dula with her point man Garazeb Aurelios, with our leader Jin Erso and bounty hunter Boba Fett. I like the way you said that, and I also realized that I messed up in that order because I put Din, I put the Millennium Falcon and then Din Djarin. <laughs> <laughs> These crews make zero sense. I'll tell you a crew that makes sense, mm-hmm. and it is a crew being led by the fearless Kino Loy, who's not afraid to lay his life down even though it's a guarantee Backed up by his right-hand man, Kit the Fist Fisto, being piloted by Plo Koon with Chopper doing anything you need. Chopper is multifaceted. You think R5 can give you the confidence to do anything? Please. Accompanied by the bounty hunter, Fennec Shan, more than capable. We've seen her string up somebody in the Book of Boba Fett. The coolest part was the end of the series when she hung a guy. Hanged. Um, the diplomat Mon Mothma, OP, the Jedi Ahsoka Tano as a third Jedi Force user on the team, all aboard the Razor Crest. It's a good team. I can't wait till Andor season two when they find out what Kino Lloyd did, and you're just gonna have to undo everything. <laughs> it's a, it's a good team, except they don't fit aboard the Razor Crest. You're gonna have five people shoved in the cockpit watching Plo Koon pilot while you got three better pilots standing right next to him. It's gonna cause a lot of friction and. Kit Fisto, while he's a great point man, a wonderful Jedi, fierce warrior. I actually have nothing bad to say about him. That's I a know. Good pick. It's, it's champagne problems, baby. <laughs> I'm surrounded by too many multifaceted people. Everyone's like, wow, we're just a solid crew. And because there's so many Jedis on them, they call themselves the J-Squad. Kit, pretty Fi- good. Kit Fisto can kind of carry his team out of the swim deficit with Kino Loy. Kit Fisto's a phenomenal swimmer. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's true. They cancel each other out. Yeah. And that was Kino Loy's only downside. It's true. In your mind. It looks great in a white suit. All right. Well, that was the 2023 draft until we have three more this year because I really enjoy this. And I, this went way differently than I thought. And the fact that it got really intense and I liked it. <laughs> I'm excited to watch the first, let's re-listen to this. And everyone's kind of like, yeah, pick this person. That's it. Yeah, it's good. And then it's divulge into madness by the end, <laughs> which is what we're currently sitting in. So, please, I don't know. I've never wanted more comments in my life to see who agrees with who. Obviously, I did not give much of a fight for my group because I really like it. Max gave it the most fight. Let's see if anybody agrees with them. And Luke Taylor has the most energy, I think. Uh, Max definitely has the most uh, the powerful, uh, all the all the Jedis. And I just like all the characters that I like who will sacrifice themselves on a dime. All right. Anybody have some force for thought for this week? You do! Yeah, I you- do have some force for thought, actually. I was uh, re-watching Attack of the Clones over the weekend, and I got to the scene where... Obi-Wan is talking to Yoda and Mace Windu from Kamino, and he's like, I've just had made contact with the Prime Minister of Kamino. You know you know the scene. Yeah. And uh, Yoda hears about Jango Fett, and he says, okay, Obi-Wan, bring him to us, and we'll question him. Under what authority is Obi-Wan to do this? Are they some sort of galactic police, and he's detaining Jango Fett? If so, on what crime? And what is Kamino's extradition process like? Because they're not a Republic planet, 
and Jango Fett's a gainfully employed man living under their premises. Are they just going to let him go along with the Jedi for an mm-hmm. undetermined amount of time? Obi-Wan came up with a single pilot t- star fighter. Is Jango Fett mm. going to ride on his lap? Yeah, is he going to tow Slave that. 1? Are they going to reimburse Slave 1 for the mileage all the way to Coruscant? I love this thinking. I, it just it brought up so many questions, and I thought, you know, I don't need these questions answered, but it is some nice force for thought. Yeah. Well, let us know. That is this episode for this week. Uh, where can we find you guys at? I also feel like, you know what? I'm not even going to say it. You can find me if you want to. I post nothing about Star Wars on my personal stuff I realize where you guys have... I try to. Specific Star Wars-centered things to plug. I try so. to retweet Luke. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find me at Kit Fisto blog. I will actually give you some content to look at. And I will retweet everything he is saying if you want to follow that at Maxter Jedi. And you can find us at Force for Thought across all the socials. Uh, thanks for listening. Anybody have anything else to say? Besides, see you, Sammy. Yeah.